Holy shit, my god. Uh, it's been a while since I've had an episode make me sweat like this. Did you guys see the same episode of Ages of S.H.I.E.L.D. that I did? Because, holy shit, I can't stop saying holy shit. I was saying holy shit after I turned it off. I was like, wow. Um, okay, well, a lot happened in this week's episode of Ages of S.H.I.E.L.D. It's almost like the show's way of saying, bitch, I do not, I know you did not say we were slow last week. Or even a little bit slow. Even if you just got certain things moving here and there. We're about to show you. We're about to show you that we're the new and improved Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. that was not there in Season 1. And this episode reminded us with that. Because for every moment that I thought it was going to end like on a cliffhanger or something, the episode just kept rolling. And it kept rolling. And it kept rolling with more and more happening at a very quick pace where I'm like, Shit, we're here? I can only imagine what we're going to be doing in the last two episodes within the next couple weeks. So before I get ahead of myself, I want to break it down. First, we open with something that we've been waiting for for a very long time that we quickly decided, you know what, maybe it was best that we didn't see too much of this because we first open up the episode with Yo-Yo and the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. on board the Zephyr taking care of Daisy and Simmons while they go about their business. And basically the show lets us know right off the bat that the shit that was going on in the real world wasn't really that interesting to begin with. Yo-Yo wasn't doing some kind of secret co uh, co covert operations type thing. No, they were just trying to make sure that they didn't freeze their asses off on the Zephyr and trying to make sure that they can port over as much energy to their gaming PC that's hooked up to the framework as much as possible to keep it from overheating. And I like that the major thing that this provided us with is why it is that Ivanov who, by the way, finally learned his name, Russian dude, big ra Russian dude villain, I finally learned his name, we finally get a clear answer as to why Ivanov was very quick to find the Zephyr after all this time, like, how out of the blue, did, they, did it just come out of the blue and Ivanov was able to pinpoint them? Kind of, sort of, yes, because they were actually cloaked the entire time and now they were forced to take off the cloak to make sure that this thing was up and running and keeping Daisy and Simmons inside of the framework. So I'm like, okay, cool. And we get a, through a treatment of a montage that, yeah, things weren't all that interesting. The days went by, they were trying to survive, they are trying to make sure that everything was cool. So I'm like, okay, at least they made, us cl uh, made it clear as to why we didn't see that much of that and that's because it wasn't interesting to begin with. Moving on through and we're catching up now with the current timeline of the rest of our crew being within the framework for presumably the final time. But it doesn't in a surprising way because first off, I did not know that the title of this episode was called Farewell Crow World. That would have been a hint to them exiting the framework from the beginning. But thankfully I didn't. And then this episode doesn't start off that way. The episode starts off with conversations between characters, especially those early on conversations with uh, Coulson and May trying to convince her that the world is real, yada yada. And then we have Simmons going on the uh, on this mission to try to get the Father Fitz to convince Re regular Fitz that this world is not real, to try to work a plan there. And at first I thought that that was going to be stretched amongst the episode, but then shit just snowballed out of control from that point. That was the kicker that just made things move and escalate at a very fast pace because dude dies. The the father fa father Fitz, Alistair Fitz, gets killed off in this episode. He's gone and that c creates the catalyst for Fitz going on this rampage to track them down, which then leads them to the point of the of the door that leads on to the other world, which had a video game style to it, being underneath the lava. It's like in a Legend of Zelda game or a dungeon crawler type of game where you don't know what the hell you're supposed to do, but then by accident you press the button and you realize that you almost opened something, but now you need to press it a number of times. You're like, oh shit, that's where it was. That's pretty much what Quake does with her powers here by opening up that portal. But then the Hydra agents show up. And here's my only little small nitpick that kind of it goes against one character, and that's May. You see the Hydra agents, it doesn't look like they recognize that you're there, except for maybe the Quinjet outside parked in the parking lot, but besides that, I feel like they could have had the element of surprise and would have taken those guys a whole uh, down a whole lot easier, but instead Maze is just like, Hydra agents, hide! They're like, bruh, bro, it would be sis, see? So, whatever. Anyways. Coulson decides to make the leap, not before getting shot, which was an emotional moment because he looked so innocent in that moment where he's like, it's real, I have to take this leap of faith, and then he gets shot. It's a very visceral scene and image to really see, especially us Ages of S.H.I.E.L.D. fans. We look at that and we're like, holy shit, they just shot down Coulson. It's Avengers all over again. But after digesting it, it's almost like, okay, even the character himself recognizes that we've done this before. He's like, this feels a little bit familiar, so that's a callback to, Ages of, uh, to not only within Ages of S.H.I.E.L.D., but also the Avengers movie where he gets killed by Loki. 
I thought that that was rather interesting, but at the same time, what I found more interesting is that the show recognized this kind of meta moment. Like, okay, we're not going to overplay this and overdraw it too much. You've seen it before. Let's just get him to the portal. And we have Coulson being the first person to finally and successfully exit the framework. And I knew that it was only a matter of time before Mage joined, everybody else joined, but then we suffer some repercussions. First of all, when Coulson goes through, it kind of creates like a ripple effect. This ripple effect finally opens Mac's eyes. And this was bound to be interesting because the entire time Mac was the one who almost looked like he was complacent within this world. Even if it's run by Hydra, he's able to accept that because he has hope. He has the one thing that makes him 100% truly happy and that's his daughter, Hope. So I knew it was, I don't want to say it was predictable, but I saw it coming that Mac was going to make the decision to actually stay because Mac throughout the series has been a religious man he's a man of god he believes in heaven devil blah 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 so to him this framework even though it's kind of jittered here and there especially with the totalitarian nature of hydra overrunning the whole thing hope being in that world <clears throat> especially being alive considering she's dead in the other world is makes this whole place like his version of heaven so Obviously, when somebody comes to you and says, hey, go back to the real world and leave heaven behind where you can have what makes you most happy in life, obviously, you're going to look at that and be like, mm, I don't think I want to. As much as I, people miss me down there, I, I've kind of, I'm dead for a reason. And I like that they apply that to his character. It doesn't go, it doesn't betray the character. And it makes for a somber scene between him and uh, Daisy that gets really emotional, especially when Daisy starts to break down. It's almost like a farewell, farewell to a character. Almost, because I feel like maybe they could use this as a wild card to kind of save up for the finale to show that, hey, look, Mac is back, he's got a shotgun axe, but regretfully he had to leave Hope behind. I feel like maybe they'll bring that up in the in the finale, either in the next episode or in the finale. It looks like it could make up for a very badass return type of moment that we could all cheer for, but who knows? Maybe he'll end up staying in the framework. Could go other way at this point. The other thing that is very interesting to note when all of our characters are going through Back to the Real World is one that I've always seen play out in the show, but I never mentioned in any of my reviews. However, I would hear other people mention, especially IGN with their reviews, their written reviews, they would often mention that out of all the characters here that will take some part of their alternate version with them back to the real world is actually going to be Fitz. And I loved how they wrote the scene of Fitz being forced. He didn't go through the portal willingly. He was forced by Radcliffe into the portal. He did not have that change. May did. Coulson did. Mac, in a way, did, but he didn't go through. Obviously, Daisy and Simmons don't really count because they knew the entire time they, they were in a fake world. Fitz is the only one that he was actually still convinced that the whole thing was real and he was still that hardened, cold-hearted person that he was alternated to be in this world, but then taking that person and shoving it back into the real world, which is bound to have some kind of repercussions in the real world. My theory about him dying is now out the window because that's obviously not going to happen, even though maybe he could do that in the real world. Maybe he'll have some kind of redemptive arc within the next two episodes that could lead to his demise. Who knows? And maybe Mac will return and kind of fit somewhere into that. But Fitz going through into the real world but without being changed back to how he was subconsciously has its consequences and we see that play out where he's like panicking Coulson's trying to console him and he's just like oh my god I killed people and it's almost like he's half seas in the mind because he recognizes Coulson he recognizes who he is he notices that this was a fake role where he did terrible things but then in comes Ada, now a real person who managed to seep over to the real world and create a real body for herself, walks into the room, and this is what makes things interesting. He, She's just like, hey, Leopold, and Fitz turns around and calls her Ophelia. Doesn't call her Ada, doesn't call her Agnes or whatever, who he references to there in his little freakout moment. He calls her Ophelia, which means that part of that subconscious that was in the framework is still like bleeding somewhere there in his mind. But before we get any answers, Ada pulls a Deadpool, and by Deadpool I mean Deadpool from X-Men Origins Wolverine, and out of her ass, she disappears. Like like she literally teleports Nightcrawler style. Okay, S.H.I.E.L.D., it's time to explain that. My assumption is that it's bound to the Darkhold, since she's absorbed all of that information and technology and power from the Darkhold, I feel like it's somehow connected to that. And chances are it will be because if you guys follow social media, I'm not going to mention it here in case you don't know what's uh, bound to happen within the finale. 
but they got something saved up for the finale that I think could have been an awesome surprise if they hadn't mentioned it on Facebook or whatever. Why? Because ratings. we got to get those ratings. Guys, some things work best when they're a fucking surprise and you're just not doing a good job of that. You didn't go, did a good job with keeping Triple Secret because you put the, na- the actor's name in the main title sequence at the beginning. And now you're not go- doing a good job here because not only is this da- tied to Dark Hole technology, but you had to make that announcement. So chances are it's going to go in that direction, but that doesn't make me look any less forward to it. One of the interesting things about this episode is that I believe this is one of the shortest that I've ever watched without commercials. It's like 40 minutes, cut out the main title, cut out the little logos at the beginning. You're dealing with nearly 39 minute, a 39 minute hour long episode which is pretty short when you take out all the extra stuff. It's like one of the shortest ever. And yet it was packed with so many things that just escalated one after another that made this one of the most tense and exciting episodes of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. thus far and really complements the slightly slow but yet still interesting one from last week. So I'm going to be giving uh, Farewell Crew World a low 9 out of 10. I'm only not giving high because it still leaves on a cliffhanger that leaves us with a couple of more questions than answers. And that slight nitpick with Agent May, it still kind of bothers me. I don't know why it shouldn't, but it does. So please let me know in the comments below what you guys thought of this week's episodes of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Please let me know if you guys have any theories leading up into the final two episodes. Now that we're presumably done with the framework because we still have Max somewhere in there and I feel like the writers and the producers behind the show are saving him up for one big heroic moment within the next couple of episodes especially since yo-yo's still out there and maybe yo-yo will maybe jump into the framework or maybe there's going to be some kind of connection there that's going to bring him back to the real world and bring him that acceptance who knows what's in store for Fitz now knowing that he's a troubled mind like literally a completely complex and fucked up mind being that part of his framework self is might just be in there who knows we'll wait and see but it's definitely in going into some some very exciting territory for Ages of S.H.I.E.L.D. that just makes this a very exciting show. Please let me know all of your comments, feedback, and theories in the comment section below. And make sure you like and share this video. Follow me on Instagram and on Twitter at DrBetterDavid. And make sure to subscribe for the reviews coming in the next couple of weeks for the remaining episodes of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Who's excited? I'm sure you are just as much as I am. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.